Welcome back to Nostalgia Channel. Today in this poignant video, we're here to provide you with the most recent updates on the passing of several noteworthy individuals. As a reliable news source, we stand dedicated to paying tribute to and cherishing the memories of those who have left a lasting impact on our lives and the world. If the tales of these exceptional individuals strike a chord with you, we kindly ask for your support by showing your appreciation through liking this video. Thank you for joining us in this moment of contemplation and honoring their legacies. Richard Ferrangi, a character actor known for his vivid portrayals that left an indelible mark on film and television, passed away at 86 on May 21st. Born in Brooklyn, New York, Foraji's life read like a script from one of the many gangster films he starred in, rising from actual mob ties and a prison sentence to a celebrated career in Hollywood. Foraji first captured attention with his role as Corsaro in the groundbreaking 1973 film Serpico, alongside Al Pacino. He carved a niche for himself by portraying gritty, nuanced characters seamlessly transitioning from small roles to more significant, memorable performances. His portrayal of Arnold Pletcher in Repo Man showcased his ability to deliver lines with a compelling mix of intensity and dark humor, earning him a special place in the hearts of film aficionados. Perhaps most notably, Foroji appeared in the 1988 action comedy Midnight Run as the mobster Tony Darvo acting alongside Robert De Niro. His role in the 1993 crime drama, Carlito's Way, again with Pacino, further cemented his reputation as a formidable talent in portraying complex criminal characters. His filmography also includes appearances in classics, such as Once Upon a Time in America and Ghostbusters 2, and his television credits span popular series like Who's the Boss? The Jeffersons, and Hill Street Blues. Beyond his acting career, Foraji shared his extraordinary life journey in his 2020 memoir, From the Mob to the Movies, How I Escaped the Mafia and Landed in Hollywood. His book provided a raw, authentic glimpse into his transformation from a life of crime to one of cinematic acclaim, offering inspiration and a testament to the power of change and redemption. Richard Foraji's legacy is characterized not only by the depth and authenticity he brought to his roles, but also by his remarkable personal transformation. His story is a compelling reminder of the human capacity for change and the redemptive power of art. Tributes to Richard Foraji. Don Penny, a gifted American television actor and comedian, passed away on May 6 at the age of 91 in Palmetto, Florida. Born Donald Penny Schneider on April 6, 1933, in Brooklyn, New York, he was the son of Max and Rose Schneider. Penny's dynamic career spanned memorable roles on television and an intriguing stint as a speechwriter for the 38th President of the United States, Gerald Ford. He was best known for his portrayals of Lieutenant Stanley Harris in The Lieutenant and Pharmacist, mate Charles Tyler in The Wackiest Ship in the Army. His performances in these series showcased his versatility and comedic timing, earning him a place in the hearts of audiences. Beyond his contributions to television, Penny's role as a speechwriter for President Ford highlighted his diverse talents and ability to engage with audiences off-screen as well. His passing marks the end of a long and varied career in entertainment and public service, leaving behind a legacy of laughter, memorable performances, and significant contributions to both the arts and the political landscape of his time. Penny's work remains a testament to his skill as an actor and his commitment to his craft. Fred Roos, the Oscar-winning producer of The Godfather Part II and a seminal figure in the film industry, passed away at the age of 89 on May 18th 
just four days shy of his 90th birthday. Roos was not only a pivotal collaborator of Francis Ford Coppola and Sofia Coppola, but also a visionary force who shaped some of the most iconic films in Hollywood history. Born and raised in Santa Monica, California, Roos began his career in television as a casting director in the late 1960s, quickly making a name for himself with his remarkable knack for discovering new talent. His transition into film casting led to seminal works like Monty Hellman's Flight to Fury and Tulane Blacktop. However, it was his collaboration with George Lucas on American Graffiti that underscored his talent-spotting prowess, famously casting then-unknown actor Harrison Ford, setting the stage for Ford's future as Han Solo in Star Wars. Roos's association with Francis Ford Coppola marked a significant epic in cinema, beginning with the casting for The Godfather. His role as a producer on The Godfather Part II not only earned him an Academy Award, but also firmly established his reputation for managing ambitious cinematic undertakings. His work on Apocalypse Now was a testament to his resilience and dedication, navigating through a chaotic production that included natural disasters, health crises among the cast, and intense on-set dynamics. Beyond his accolades and contributions to some of the most pivotal films of the 20th century, Roos was known for his loyalty and his unrelenting belief in the talents of those he worked with. As Harrison Ford once said, Roos's support was pivotal in launching numerous careers, including his own. Fred Roos's impact on cinema extends beyond the films he helped create. His keen eye for talent, commitment to storytelling, and ability to handle the pressures of film production have left an indelible mark on Hollywood. As we remember him today, we reflect on a career that not only defined an era of filmmaking, but also inspired countless individuals within the industry. Tributes to Fred Roos. Jan A. P. Kaczmarek, the esteemed Polish composer whose evocative scores graced over 70 feature films and documentaries, passed away on May 21st at the age of 71. Born in 1953 in Konin, Poland, Kaczmarek's rich legacy is marked by his profound contributions to the world of film music, most notably his Oscar-winning score for Finding Neverland. Kaczmarek's journey into music was deeply rooted in his Polish heritage. Educated at Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań, where he initially studied law, his passion for music eventually led him to work with the avant-garde theater laboratory under Jerzy Grotowski. He founded the Orchestra of the Eighth Day, and by 1989, Kaczmarek had moved to Los Angeles, where his career in film scoring would flourish. His talent for capturing the nuanced emotional landscapes of films like Hachi, A Dog's Tale, Unfaithful, and The Visitor earned him widespread acclaim. Kaczmarek's work on Finding Neverland not only earned him an Academy Award, but also accolades from the National Board of Review and nominations for a Golden Globe and a BAFTA. Beyond his film work, Kaczmarek was deeply committed to commemorating and celebrating Polish history and culture through music. He composed significant works such as Cantata for Freedom and Oratorio 1956, which were performed at major national events in Poland. His dedication to fostering artistic talent was evident in his founding of the Rosbitek Institute, modeled after the Sundance Institute, to support emerging artists in film, theater, music, and new media. In his later years, Kaczmarek continued to influence and inspire through initiatives like the Transatlantic Festival, an annual event in Łódź, Poland, which celebrated and nurtured cross-cultural artistic exchanges. His commitment to Polish cinema was honored in 2023 with a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Polish Film Academy. John A. P. Kaczmarek's enduring impact on film music and his efforts to promote Polish culture globally leave a lasting legacy that will continue to inspire future generations. Tributes to Jan A. P. Kaczmarek.
Bad Bones, a dynamic force in the professional wrestling world, passed away on May 20th at the young age of 40. Known for his intense style and formidable presence in the ring, Bad Bones carved out a distinguished career that resonated with fans across the globe. Debuting in 2004, Bad Bones quickly rose to prominence in the independent wrestling circuit, showcasing his skills in various international promotions across Europe, England, Japan, Israel, and the United States. His powerful performances and undeniable charisma led him to capture prestigious titles such as the WXW Unified World Heavyweight Championship and the European Heavyweight Championship. Etching his name in the annals of wrestling history, Bad Bones' talent and tenacity also brought him to total non-stop action wrestling, where he first made an impact during the September 29th TNA First Impact Tour by defeating Karsten Kretschmer. His prowess earned him a victory in the January 2011 TNA Gut Check in London, a testament to his skill and determination. Returning to TNA in 2014 and again in 2017, Bad Bones continued to compete against top-tier opponents, including notable matches against Samoa Joe and Josh Barnett, further solidifying his reputation as a formidable competitor in the wrestling community. Beyond the titles and matches, Bad Bones was celebrated for his ability to engage and electrify audiences, making every match memorable with his fierce competitiveness and spirited persona. His contributions to wrestling were not just limited to his achievements in the ring, but also extended to his role as an inspiring figure for upcoming wrestlers. The wrestling community mourns the loss of Bad Bones, a wrestler who not only entertained, but also inspired with his dedication and passion for the sport. His legacy will live on through the moments he created in the ring and the impact he had on fans and fellow wrestlers alike. Tributes to Bad Bones. Larry Bensky, a venerated literary and political journalist, whose career spanned decades in print, broadcast, and teaching, passed away on May 19th in Berkeley, California. He was a profound voice in journalism, known for his critical coverage of national affairs and his deep commitment to social justice. Born in New York City, Bensky's intellectual journey began at Stuyvesant High School, followed by Yale University, where he honed his skills in journalism, his early career saw him working as a print journalist and editor, contributing to prestigious publications and setting a foundation for his insightful commentary. His experiences at the Paris Review and the New York Times Sunday Book Review during the volatile Vietnam War era sharpened his critical edge, which became a hallmark of his career. Bensky's most impactful years were arguably at Pacifica radio station KPFA in Berkeley, where he became a distinguished figure in public broadcasting. From the 1970s through the late 1990s, he covered significant events such as the Iran-Contra hearings, Supreme Court confirmation hearings, and pivotal elections, bringing a nuanced perspective that resonated with listeners nationwide. His work not only informed public discourse but also enriched it, earning him the prestigious George Polk Award and multiple accolades for his journalistic integrity and investigative prowess. Beyond journalism, Bensky was a passionate educator and activist. He taught at Stanford and several California universities, influencing countless students with his expertise in media criticism, journalism, and political science. His activism, particularly against the Vietnam War and for nuclear disarmament, underscored his deep commitment to peace and equity, principles that permeated both his professional and personal life. Larry Bensky's legacy is one of fearless journalism, committed activism, and influential teaching. His voice, profoundly significant in shaping thoughtful discourse, will be deeply missed, but his contributions will continue to impact generations. Tributes to Larry Bensky Sam Butcher, 
the American artist and creator of the beloved Precious Moments brand, passed away at the age of 85 on May 10th. His art, infused with heartfelt Christian themes, touched the lives of millions around the world, bringing a sense of peace and serenity through its distinct teardrop-eyed characters. Born on January 1, 1939, in Jackson, Michigan, Butcher was the third of five children in a family that soon moved to Redding, California. From an early age, Butcher expressed his faith through artistry, initially serving as a chalkboard minister where he illustrated the teachings of Christianity. This humble beginning set the stage for what would become a remarkable journey in both his spiritual and artistic life. In 1974, Butcher created the first drawings of what would become precious moments for his business, Jonathan and David, which he co-founded with Bill Beal. These illustrations, originally intended for greeting cards, soon expanded into a widely celebrated collection of porcelain figurines, vinyl dolls, and other memorabilia. His work, characterized by its gentle and nurturing qualities, resonated deeply with a global audience making Precious Moments a household name. Beyond his commercial success, Butcher was deeply committed to community service and philanthropy. In 1989, he founded the Precious Moments Chapel in Carthage, Missouri, a sanctuary personally designed to offer comfort and inspiration to visitors. His charitable efforts extended overseas to the Philippines, where he not only created employment opportunities through his resort, Sagu Gardens, but also supported local education and development. Butcher's later years were marked by personal challenges, including the tragic death of his son Philip and his own health issues. Despite these adversities, his faith and dedication to spreading joy through his art never wavered. Sam Butcher's legacy is one of compassion, faith, and the enduring power of art to convey universal messages of love and hope. His creations will continue to inspire and comfort future generations, embodying his vision of a kinder, more empathetic world. Tributes to Sam Butcher. Ivan Boski, the infamous American stock trader who became synonymous with Wall Street greed during the 1980s, passed away on May 20th at the age of 87. Born into a Jewish family in Detroit, Michigan, Boski rose from modest beginnings to become one of the most talked about figures in financial circles. Boski's journey into the financial world began after graduating from Detroit College of Law in 1965. He moved to New York and eventually started his own brokerage firm, Ivan F. Boski & Company, with seed money from his wife's family. His firm specialized in arbitrage, betting on corporate takeovers, which initially led to great financial success and amassed him a fortune estimated at over $200 million by 1986. However, his career took a notorious turn when Boski was implicated in a massive insider trading scandal that rocked the financial industry in 1986. He agreed to a plea deal with federal prosecutors, admitting to conspiracy to commit securities violations based on inside information. This case highlighted the lax enforcement of insider trading laws at the time and led to widespread reforms in how securities regulations were enforced. Boski's cooperation with the Securities and Exchange Commission helped unveil further corruption on Wall Street, including the activities of financier Michael Milken. His testimony was pivotal in expanding the scope of investigations into illegal stock market manipulations during that era. Despite his cooperation, Boski was fined $100 million and served two years in prison, a sentence that marked the end of his career in finance and left his reputation irreversibly damaged. After prison, Boski attempted to reconnect with his roots and even engaged in philanthropic efforts. Though he remained a controversial figure, his life story serves as a complex portrait of a man who reached the pinnacle of financial success but ultimately fell from grace in a spectacular fashion. 
Boski leaves behind a legacy that is a cautionary tale about the perils of unchecked ambition and the importance of integrity in the financial world. Tributes to Ivan Boski. Tony Venturi, a prominent Brazilian filmmaker, passed away at the age of 68 on May 18th after falling ill on a beach in São Sebastião on the coast of São Paulo State. He had celebrated his 68th birthday in November 2023. His wake is scheduled for Monday, May 20th, from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Brazilian Cinematheque in São Paulo. Educated in film at Ryerson University in Toronto, Canada, and at the University of São Paulo in Brazil, Venturi directed numerous fictional films ranging from drama to comedy. His wife, actress Deborah Dubach, featured in many of his works. He leaves behind his wife and two sons, Theo and Otto. One of his most acclaimed feature films, Latitude Zero, based on the play As Quas Ruinas da Nossa Caba, by playwright Fernando Boni, received over a dozen awards at national and international festivals. Another notable work, Cabra Sega, depicted the journey of two young militants during the years of military dictatorship in Brazil and was awarded at various film festivals, including the 37th Brasilia Festival, where it won for Best Direction, Screenplay, and Audience Choice. The passing of Tony Venturi was mourned by many, including the granddaughter of Luis Carlos Prestes, sociologist Ana Maria Prestes, who expressed her condolences and gratitude for his work on social media. Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva also lamented the filmmaker's death. Known for his cultural activism, Venturi served as the president of the São Paulo Filmmakers Association in 2001 and was revered for his dedication to the arts. His friend, Nabil Bondi, a professor at the Faculty of Architecture and Urbanism at USP and former Sao Paulo City Councilor, described him as a wonderful, supportive, and affectionate person, sharing their recent interactions and Venturi's optimistic outlook on the future of audiovisual policy in Sao Paulo. Tributes to Tony Venturi, June Mendoza, a luminary Australian portrait painter renowned for her masterful depictions of some of the most notable figures of our time, passed away at the age of 99 on May 15th following a stroke. Born in Melbourne on June 12, 1924, into a family deeply rooted in the performing arts, Mendoza discovered her passion for art at a young age while touring with her musician parents. Mendoza's extraordinary talent in portraiture was recognized worldwide, leading her to receive commissions to paint dignitaries including Queen Elizabeth II, Princess Diana, and prominent political figures like Margaret Thatcher and John Major. Her portraits extended beyond royalty and politicians to include sports personalities, military officers, and celebrities, capturing not just their likeness but the very essence of their personalities. Her works are proudly displayed in prestigious collections across the globe, from the National Portrait Gallery in London to the hallowed halls of Trinity College, Oxford, and the Palace of Westminster. Mendoza's ability to weave personality and prestige into her paintings earned her a respected place among the elites of portrait painting. In addition to her painting career, Mendoza's life was rich with experiences and recognition. Her appearance on the BBC radio program Desert Island Discs in 1979 and her portrait of the show's presenter, Roy Plumley, in 1985, are memorable highlights that endeared her to the British public. June Mendoza's legacy transcends her art. It lies in her ability to immortalize the spirits of those she portrayed offering future generations a window into the souls of some of the past century's most influential figures. Her death marks the end of an era in portrait painting, but her masterpieces will continue to inspire and awe all who view them. Tributes to June Mendoza
what's trending on the internet. News 1. Elvis Presley's beloved Graceland Mansion, a shrine to the legendary king of rock and roll, is poised to hit the auction block amid foreclosure proceedings, throwing his granddaughter Riley Keough into a fraught legal battle. The iconic property in Memphis, Tennessee, scheduled for auction on May 23rd, has become the center of a contentious dispute after Riley K. labeled the upcoming sale fraudulent. This dramatic turn of events follows a 2018 deed of trust, wherein Riley's late mother, Lisa Marie Presley, allegedly secured a $3.8 million loan using Graceland as collateral. The lender, Missouri-based Nassani Investments, a private lending firm, claims that Lisa Marie defaulted on the loan. However, Riley's lawsuit, initiated in Shelby County Chancery Court, contends that the loan documents are fraudulent, including forged signatures of Lisa Marie, and challenges the legitimacy of Nassani Investments itself. Graceland isn't just any estate. It's a significant cultural landmark purchased by Elvis in 1957 for $12,500 and opened to the public as a museum in 1982. It draws hundreds of thousands of Elvis fans annually. Its rich history and unique decor, including the famous Jungle Room, capture the spirit of Elvis' life and career. News 2 Tragedy struck aboard a Singapore Airlines flight from London to Singapore when severe turbulence led to the death of one individual and injuries to several others. The Boeing 777, carrying 21 passengers and 18 crew members, was compelled to make an emergency landing in Bangkok. The airline confirmed the incident on their Facebook page, pledging their commitment to collaborating with Thai authorities to offer necessary medical assistance and support. Singapore Airlines has dispatched a team to Bangkok to provide further aid. Their priority remains ensuring the well-being of all passengers and crew on board the aircraft. The airline also extended their condolences to those affected. Turbulence, a common yet unpredictable air travel phenomenon, occurs when a plane encounters conflicting air currents. While often mild, severe turbulence can lead to significant injuries and presents a rare but genuine risk during flights. Recent incidents globally have underscored concerns about the increased frequency of turbulence due to climate change. News 3. Victoria Monet, acclaimed for her hit On My Mama, has announced the cancellation of her scheduled June performances due to health concerns. The Grammy-winning artist was set to light up stages at Governor's Ball in New York, Roots Picnic in Philadelphia, and Blavity House Party in Nashville. Expressing her disappointment on Instagram, Monet apologized to her fans, stating, I am gutted to share that I will no longer be able to perform. I have been dealing with some ongoing health issues that have to be addressed right now, but I will be back out there soon. That's a promise. The announcement has prompted festival organizers to seek replacements, with Chapel Ran stepping in at Governor's Ball. Both fans and festival teams have shown support for Monet, with well wishes pouring in through social media. Despite this setback, Monet remains a symbol of perseverance in the music industry. Having triumphed at the 2024 Grammys, she continues to inspire her audience, sharing, I just want to say to everybody who has a dream, I want you to look at this as an example. My roots have been growing underneath ground unseen for so long, and I feel like today I'm sprouting. As we conclude this segment on Channel Nostalgia, we want to extend our heartfelt gratitude to you, our viewers, for joining us in honoring the lives of those we've discussed today. Their contributions, whether in entertainment, sports, or other fields, have left a lasting mark on our shared consciousness. As we bid farewell to these remarkable individuals, let's carry their legacies forward with respect and gratitude. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more updates and tributes. Once again, thank you for your unwavering support in commemorating these extraordinary lives.